this is Joseph Coco. I'm at TCAF 2015 on behalf of Becca Hilburn's Art Process Blog. Keep on trucking, Nato Soup. If you can introduce yourself, please. Hi, my name's Jake, uh, Jake Richmond. I do a comic called Modest Medusa. Okay. And what's bringing you to TCAF this year? Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, I've never been to Toronto before. And yeah. I really wanted to come. I really wanted to do a show on the side of the continent. Yeah. I'm, I'm from Portland, Oregon, and I spend most of my time in the Northwest in Oregon and Seattle. Uh, but I was excited to come out here to meet some of my readers who uh, have supported my Kickstarters and stuff like that. Okay. And, you know, just to meet new people and show new people my comics. Yeah. yeah. And you primarily do children's comics, or that's just all you have on the table this evening because you, you're in the children's comics You section. know, it's funny. I, I never considered Modest Medusa a children's comic, but that's all, all my readers are like little kids. Yeah. Um, I always but thought of it it's as... It's kind of like Jeff Smith with Bone. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. When he was creating it, it wasn't originally right. intended as a children's comic. It was just a comic for him. Right. And it just so happens he had the part of a child, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my niece, Mara, is a huge fan of Bone. And uh, she's actually in the comic, and that's one of the things she says. She always says, it's like Bone, it's for everybody. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's full of stuff that's not really for children. Like, it's got a really vanilla porn joke early on. It's got a chainsaw wound. It's got a lot of poop. Um, poop is definitely for kids. That's what I always say. I'm always terrified I'll meet a parent who buys it and then comes back and says, this has too much poop for my kid. Uh, What's the acceptable I don't poop know. per page I, limit? Uh, in my mind, you can really not have enough poop, but um, apparently, I, I don't know, nobody's ever objected. Uh, there, this is the porn joke, by the way, where she finds a box of porn. Naughty magazine. And, and it's like yeah. as G-rated as I can make it, and nobody's ever objected to it, so I feel pretty safe. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it is kind of a children's book, I guess. Um, I also do a superhero book, which is also pretty G-rated. And, oh, and I do a um, Legend of Korra fan comic, which is... What's a superhero book? Uh, it's called Ghost Kiss. Okay. And it's not actually a book. It's a webcomic, and I've only done like eight pages because I just started on it this week. But you, you, need, to, you need to talk about it like it's super successful. Uh, You're it's on camera super here. successful. It's super <laughs> awesome. All right, it is about this woman named Maya who has the crappiest superpower ever. Uh, she can kiss people and then they forget who she is. Okay. Uh, and it's not useful, so she has to be a good superhero in other ways. She has to be strong and be smart and find out ways to use this awful, horrible, embarrassing superpower that actually works out. And uh, like I said, I've only done eight pages, so I'm still trying to figure it out. Yeah. But it's really fun. I'm really enjoying it. Okay. Yeah. And what was the other comic you had mentioned? Oh, I also do a Legend of Korra fan comic. Okay. Uh, yeah. Which is really fanish. And right. A little mildly more targeted at the Tumblr crowd, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is mildly embarrassing, but it's you know it's my uh, it's it's my joy. <laughs> and um, what specifically brought you to TCAF? You said you wanted to uh, uh, you wanted to meet people at the show. Yeah, um, I have a lot of readers from around the world. <laughs> But specifically, there's a clump of Modest Medusa readers who live right here in Toronto. Okay. And I really wanted to come out, and I really wanted to meet them. And unfortunately, most of them couldn't make it to the show. Uh. Like, all week long, I've been hearing from people saying, oh, I'm out of town, I'm sick, I have to work all weekend. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so well, all these the people are hoping to meet. The weather's pretty nice here, so yeah. people might uh, well, see I, that as a good time to yeah. go out and... A few of them have shown up. Okay. Uh, which is nice. Uh, yeah. One guy, he's, he was huge, and he showed up, he's got long hair, and he just comes up and he kind of goes, Ugh, I like your comic. <laughs> and I go, okay, thanks, and then he leaves, and then a few minutes later, I get a, t I get a um, Facebook message from him, and he was like, I was too shy to really stick around and say anything, but I really like your comic, and it was really cool to meet you. And I was like, you can come back yeah. and talk, but, and he was like, no, no. Some people are a little shy towards creators. You just have to learn to engage different types of people. I'm the but same way. You're, you're dealing with kids for the most part, you said, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, a little kids, bit different. kids are. How the kids work is they will sh show up at the front of my booth. Yeah. And they will, um, like, put a coat down on the floor. And they will uh, get a snack and sit there and read all my books. And then, and then leave, and I will never see them again. So they're treating you like an anime kid would treat a Barnes & Noble. Yeah, yeah. Oh, except <laughs> the great part of that is the next time I do a show, like I'll come back. Uh, this happened to me when I was in San Francisco last year. I came back the next year, and there were all these kids who were like a foot older. They're like, they were seven and now they're eight. And yeah. they're like, oh, we love your comic so much, we read it all last year. So that's cool. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And what's been your experience with um, TCAP? We're about halfway through the first day. 
Uh, so far, so good. It's about 400 degrees warmer in here than I would like. Yeah, in the in the kids section over here, for some reason, it's unreasonably hot. It might be the windows, but who knows? Maybe. Uh, but it's, it's a great show. Everybody is super friendly. Uh, every booth is full of something amazing. Yeah. Like, I, have, I haven't been around much yet, but I haven't seen anything that sucks. Everything is really cool. Awesome. And I haven't met anybody rude yet. There's usually, like, a giant jerk. Well, we're in Canada. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, that must be it. <laughs> Um, so, can you tell me about uh, some of the other conventions you've done? You mentioned you've done a lot of uh, Northwest Coast sort of cons. Yeah. Um, I go to uh, Emerald City Comic Con okay. and Sakura Con and Geek Girl Con up in Seattle every year. Right. That's so like it's my a spectrum of readers, really. It is. Anime it's, kids, yeah. uh, general nerds, and yeah. uh, uh, also and independent comics. Yeah, exactly. And uh, that's like my holy trilogy of Northwest conventions. Okay. And, and they're all fun. Um, I have a lot of regular readers there, but every year I meet great new people. Uh, each of those conventions is really well run. And, and people, most of the people at the shows already recognize who you are, or they're like well, seeing been, you for the first time? I've been going to these shows for years, yeah. and um, yeah, as well as just shows in the area. So yeah, I'm, I'm meeting people who I've had a chance to really talk to in the past. Yeah. And uh, one of the things I always think is that uh, you go to a con for the first time, you don't sell much. You sell a little bit, you never sell as much as you want to. But you meet people. You talk to 100 people, 200 people. You give them your little, you know, your card. Your promotional item. Right. right. Uh, you get them to pick up your book, and then the next time that you see them, whether it's, you know, a month later, six months later, a year later, they buy them. Yeah. Not always, but like 75% of the time. And it, and it works. And I, I, it's always worth it to seed your audience and to get to know people and spend time talking to people. Uh, if for no other reason, then there's always the chance that they might go online and look at your comments or something. Yeah. yeah. And that's always a good experience when they review it positively. Yeah, yeah. yeah. or even just leaving a comment or yeah. liking it on Facebook. You know, anything is great. Uh, knowing that somebody actually likes your stuff is fantastic. Do you get a lot of online interaction before and after conventions in general? Uh, it depends on the show. Yeah. Uh, I always see a spike in readership. Yeah. And um, sometimes, I don't know, sometimes nobody wants to communicate and there's just like passive communication. Uh, you know, Facebook likes, uh, it increases traffic. But sometimes you get, uh, you meet people who are really enthusiastic. And like people will come and you know comment on the comic, and then other people will see that and they're like, oh, I was also there, and that will lead to like a chain of comments, which is cool. Okay. Uh, do you find that you have to present to people in different ways depending on uh, the audience or like kids at any kind of event or kids? I, I definitely, it's weird, I have, a, I have a pitch for kids, which is normally very short and involves just putting a book in their hand. Yeah. Because uh, they just want to read the book and they don't really want to talk. Yeah. Um, I have a pitch for anime fans, which is all about Pokemon and stuff like that, uh, which the Medusa character is into. Uh, comic fans, it's a little different, I go into the story a little more. And when I'm talking to parents, you know, I have a different pitch, uh, which is less about this is full of feces and more about, you know, it's a charming adventure about a little girl who wants to make friends. Right. This yeah. is how this is a safe adventure that will help yeah. your child grow, yeah. basically. Yeah. That's, that's what most parents seem to want to hear anyway. Yeah. Well, you know how this is. You, you, you have to be a salesman and you have to spend a lot of time thinking about how you're going to sell this. Or maybe you don't have to, but I, I feel like even if you don't really think about it a lot, we all end up spending a lot of time selling Either our books. physically producing things or subconsciously yeah. thinking about it, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Reflecting on what happened at a convention. Yeah. Yeah, the selling aspect of it is kind of the gross half of it. Because, you know, you don't want to spend all this time thinking, how can I get people to buy this? Yeah, because in some ways it feels like you're tricking them, but really what you're doing is wedging yeah. your way through all the noise because yeah. there's a lot yeah. of comics out there yeah. and if you don't tell people about your comics who's going to so. and people have a tendency to spend money on stuff they know even if that's not what they really want yeah you know people will buy you know, like a Captain America print or something over your comic even though they don't care about Captain America just because it's familiar yeah but you well know, they if, can show their friends and their friends recognize what right. it is they, whereas yeah. showing their friends um, Modest Medusa they might know it they might not yeah who knows how much engagement they're going to say right. and how, what is that, you know. Right. And so going the extra step and like really putting something in their hands and telling them a little bit about it and getting them to take a moment and read a few scripts, it helps. Okay. Yeah. And where can we find your work online? You can go to modestmedusa.com. Okay. Uh, and you can find not only Modest Medusa, but links to my other two comics. 
Uh, also, if you just Google Modest Medusa, it's like the first 30 things that come up. Okay. So. And I did have uh, one kind of housekeeping question. This is your first convention outside of the United States? Uh, this is my first convention outside. That doesn't sound right, but yeah, I guess it is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what was your experience with like getting through customs and having to figure out currency exchanges and all those sort of things? Thanks to TCAF, which is a fantastic convention, uh, and they did a fantastic job of uh, organizing it and explaining all the steps that needed to happen. Yeah. Uh, my visit has been painless. Right. I uh, shipped my books ahead of time. Um, I did currency exchange before I left the United States, um, but it didn't matter because they had a booth right over there where they were doing currency exchange right here at the shop. For artists or? Uh, uh, for art artists, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I walked up and got, you know, 30 bucks worth of uh, coins. Nice. So that was wonderful. No, it's been pain. Customs was easy. Everything was great. Okay. I will never fear going to a Canadian convention. <laughs> Right, but it is something you have to keep in mind when doing. It is. I was terrified shows. about it. Yeah, I was. Yeah. I was. I but brought. TCAF does have quite a bit of information on their site yeah. about uh, directed specifically at exhibitors how to handle different situations. Yeah, I. Uh, I didn't quite ship enough books, so I brought six books in my bag, and I had this completely irrational fear that they were going to be seized at customs, and I wasn't <laughs> going to get them. Yeah, we experienced something similar, so it's it natural, I think. Yeah. Okay, and finally, would you have any advice to someone who's uh, an artist who's considering attending or a writer who's considering attending TCAF for the first time? Yeah, uh, stay close to the convention if you can. Um, we got jabbed on cab fare yesterday. Oh, yeah. Uh, really badly. But um, actually, uh, my advice is that... Um, I, know, I know I just said stay close to the convention, but actually the subway series system here is fantastic. Uh, so we look for something around yeah. the... Uh, yeah, the if you one can, line or the two line. Yeah, if you can find something near the one or the two, you can get here really quickly. Yeah. And then make sure you stay in uh, Toronto long enough to actually see things. Yeah. Because it's a beautiful there's, city. There's also just a lot of things surrounding the convention, so yeah. that's definitely good advice. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. I hope you have a good TCAF. Yeah, thank you.